Amen. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Father, we thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for your grace that has gathered us together once again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the morning. Thank you for the blessings, O God. Thank you for the testimonies, Father. We appreciate you, O God. Thank you for your word that came unto us, Lord. Thank you for the exposition. Thank you for the revelation that you have granted. Thank you for our faith that has been uplifted. We bless your holy name. Be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, tonight we've come again, O God. You promise us that in the night time, say, it shall be light. Father, we pray, O God, may your light shine across our path again tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, O God, may nothing stand between us and you tonight, O God, but that the power of your Holy Spirit will be made known in the life of each and every one in Jesus' name. Come down supernaturally, O God, and minister life unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like us to sing this song just before we take the word of God. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his worth.
how we love Jesus and how we love to sing and to hear about his holy name. Praise the Lord. I also want to use this medium to thank uh, the entire church and uh, every other person uh, associated with uh, the celebration of our baby's first birthday. Thank you for the gift, the show of love. May the Lord bless you and return in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, let us read from uh, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Tonight we briefly look at the sermon by the Bram titled Confirmation of the Commission. Amen. Mark chapter 16. We might not finish it, but um, the little things we'll be able to pick from it, we trust that the Lord will make it a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark 16. Verse 14, I read in Jesus' name. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me and operated them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name uh, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with no tongue, they shall take up serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father amen we may please be seated the Lord bless each and every one in Jesus name I say God bless you or I mean it from the depth of my heart yes uh, I've never seen uh, so loving people as this sets of people the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, I believe it that truly uh, love will only be found in the midst of the bride. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to remember a scripture, so I just like to call our attention to it also. So I'd like to read uh, Matthew 24, verse. Uh, Okay. Verse 35. Say, so heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Amen. The word of God will never fail. The word of God will never pass away. I like to read the quotation from here just a minute. But the Brahm said, There is one thing that God cannot do. Did you ever think of it? There is one thing that God cannot do that is fail. God can never fail. Amen. 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 He can do everything but fail. He cannot fail. So if our most holy confidence is built this evening upon that wonderful one who can do anything there is to be done except fail, how much confidence should we have in his eternal world? Amen. If you are not going to get anything from 
this service today, just take this home. That no matter what, God cannot fail. It may not look favorable to you now. You may not see it happening now. Uh, when uh, Brother Imajo was giving his testimony in the morning, God bless him. We thank God for, uh, for the deliverance of his servant. Yes, he said, God may not grant it at your own time. Uh-huh. You know, as a servant of God, you feel, ah, I've been standing for Christ for a long time. So even before these people get to where they are taking me to, they will release me. Uh-huh. So before you know it, they bundled him out of his car. Ah, ah, they will release me. Before you know it, they took him on the river. And ah, they will release me. They took him to where he was going. Ah, ah, today, today, I will get out of here. And then he spent 17 days. Yeah. Just like that. Like play a safe. Uh, so sometimes it might not look favorable. But one thing is that God cannot fail. See, the extent to which a thing will happen has been determined by God. And it cannot pass that boundary. It cannot pass that extent. It can't go beyond that level. Yes, yeah, so we must know this solemnly in our hearts that it won't pass this boundary. It won't go beyond this level. So when we have that at the back of our mind, then every other thing, no matter what is happening, we know that the you know the devil will just be ranting and be throwing his tantrum up and down. You know that God will surely rise on the scene. Amen. Amen. Another thing that I want to call our attention to is that the word of God is inspired. If you believe that, say amen. amen. You may read it, it may look like nothing is happening. You may look at it, you may open it in the middle of the night, you may open it in the morning, you may open it in the afternoon, you read it. But I tell you, a lot of things are taking place. And but Abraham said, when that is done, he said, in God's appeal, I mean, in God's court, there is no appeal. The word had already taken its effect. I would like to tell us of a story of, uh, of a woman whose son went to Bible school and I've begun the sermon. Uh, by God's grace, we won't stay long. Uh, God being our help in the next 45 minutes, thereabout, we should be out of here. God being our help. Amen. And I know God will help us. This boy went to Bible school and Brother Bram said he had his first degree up to getting his PhD. And then along the line, he received the telegram that his mother was sick. And then, ah, I think he has about maybe six months because the, with the time he received the first telegram to the time that he eventually came home was about six months. But Abraham said about six months later. So maybe about six months to the end of his program, he received the first telegram. Ah, your mother is sick. And I was like, oh, okay, so let me just find a way. Let me rush down home. But then the project attend and all that. So before you know it, in a couple of days, he received another telegram. Ah, okay, don't worry. Don't bother coming again. Your mother is well. Everything is fine. She's not going to die. Okay, so, and the boy was very happy. He said, okay, thank God. When I finish my program, eventually, I'll go and see mama. Now, by the time he got home, after several months, uh, they were so happy. He got talking, and, you know, uh, he now asked the mother. I said, I even forgot to ask you. The other time, I received the telegram that you were sick. And just in a short moment, I received another telegram again that, ah, uh, you were here. What kind of medicine did the doctor give you? Ah, let me just go and appreciate the doctor for what he has done in your life. And the mother looked at him and said, Oh, Dr. Jesus did it for me. And the boy was like, Dr. Jesus? He said, Yes. A servant of God came here and they read Mark 16. And they lay hands on me and they prayed for me. And I got ill. And the boy was disappointed. And to our, our amazement, he just arrived from a Bible school. So this thing, <laughs> this thing, we don't learn it in school. See, whatever experience God gives you is to build faith in you. Because you cannot learn it in school. The only way you can learn to walk with the perfect God in a perfect way is by the experiences he gives you. One thing that God will not do, but the Bible said, if God call you, he will be behind you. 
And all of us that are here, there is none of us that is not called. If you are not called, you will not be here. That is the truth. That's the first, that's the foundation. If you look at the statue of a perfect man, but Abraham said the first thing is faith in you. That is the first foundation. Everybody has been called. I'm telling you, all of us that are here, we receive the call of God and we, are, and we have come. Whether you tell mama, whether it was mama that forced you to come, God used mama to bring you here. So you are actually called. That is the first foundation that you will know. Now you, need, you now need to learn how to build faith in God. So this boy was very furious and said, what kind of a statement is that? He said, you know what, mama, they taught us in Bible school that that scripture particularly is not inspired. And the mother was surprised. That, oh, really? You mean it that it was not inspired? And yet it healed me? Say, yes, it was not inspired. And the mother made this statement. He said, if God could do that to me with the uninspired world, what could he do with that that is really inspired? And I'm telling you tonight, from Genesis to Revelation, the word of God is inspired. Every statement that God makes is inspired. But the Bram said, when God speaks, he said he allocates a power behind it. In other words, he allocates inspiration behind it. And he said, he said, the word that comes out of my mouth, they are life and they are spirit. He said, that word will not return to me void. But it will accomplish the purpose for which I have sent it. The Bible did not stop there. He said, it will prosper therein. The purpose for which God has sent the word will, will, be, will come to pass. The only thing that you need to find out is what has God given me in his word. You know, the other time, uh, I think last Sunday morning when I was speaking, I was trying to compare who is your type in the Bible. If you can see who your type is, just see, just hold on to that. Your story will be like that uh, mama that Brother Bram said, uh, let's type her as Auntie Jemima. She saw a shadow in the Bible and said, I am like that Shunammite woman. Yeah, I am that, thank you. <laughs> I am that Shunammite woman. Yes. He said, if God could bring his Elijah to that woman of old, he said, where is your Elijah now? And because of the prayer of faith of an elderly woman, God granted the plane of his servant. <laughs> you hear what Brother Femi said? <laughs> you know, he said, God granted the commercial plane. And the purpose of a commercial plane is for money only. And then God, dis God disturbed the business of some people in order to answer the prayer of another woman somewhere. <laughs> yes you know a lot of people the purpose for which they take place well, they calculate their time in 45 minutes I'll be in Abuja from Lagos so uh, if the meeting okay, let, uh, this is to 5 now it's okay let's put the meeting for 7pm they know that let's, let's put the meeting, uh, the meeting for 7pm they know that by the time they take off let's say 5, 5.30 from Lagos before you know they will have settled down in Lagos and they, I mean in Abuja and they can start the meeting and then maybe when they get to Ibadan, and then God granted the plane. <laughs> and then the meeting in Abuja has been put on hold. That is what the word of God can do. Amen. See, every bit of that word is inspired. Amen. That is why the Bible said that heaven and earth will pass away. But the, the littlest of that word, but Abraham said, an iota of that word shall never go unfulfilled. Amen. The smallest or the most minute part of the word. Maybe where he said bless, it will be blessed. Where he said go, it will go. Every part of the word of God is inspired. And it will surely come to pass in the life of every believer. I tell you tonight we have a commission. And what is a commission? A commission is a charge. 
someone giving you an authority to do something on his behalf. If you see a commissioner, right, in a particular state or a minister of a uh, of a ministry in any presidency, when he speaks, they will say, uh, "Yes, the federal government has spoken." But it was not the president that spoke. They said the presidency had spoken because there is a representative, an ambassador from that place that had spoken on behalf of the higher authority. The commissioner had spoken and what he has said will, will be backed up by the authority and power of the government, of the state. Thank you, sir. Now, if you take an ambassador of one country to the other one, when he says this, they will say, Nigeria has said so in America. Or, the United States has said so, so, so in Nigeria. It's not the president or the most powerful person in that country that has spoken, but an ambassador, a representative of that place has spoken. See, there is an authority behind every word of God. We are commissioned people. We are not ordinary people living ordinary life. Let me try to look for uh, one word of the prophet. Hopefully I can get it. But the Bible said, the living word of God, spoken by a living God, must be in a living being. The living word of God spoken by a living God must be in a living being. And the living being, but the Bram is pointing to here is you and me. See, God has sent his word. God has given us his word. But the Bram said the reason Jesus was so successful in his earthly ministry was because everything that God wrote about him, first of all, he believed it. He knew that those things were for him. And after believing it, but the Bram said, he carried himself with the authority of that word, knowing that when he says this, it will come to pass. But the Bram said it in the message, perfect faith. So each and every one of us have been given commission in our life of things and things and things to do including our life as a Christian, the way we live our life. We must live our life according to the commission, according to the charge that God has given us. Now, what is a commission? A commission is an instruction or a command to do a thing. A commission is an authority given to you to perform your duties. A formal written warrant. I'm using Webster Dictionary. A formal written warrant granting the power to perform various acts or duties. A certificate confirming military rank and authority. An authorization or a command to act in a prescribed manner or a or to perform prescribed acts. We'll be able to link up some of these things at the later hand of the sermon. God helping us. The authority to act for. The authority to act for in behalf of or in place of another. To be able to do something on behalf of somebody. Now, when you are given an instruction to do a certain thing, it means that there is someone higher that has given the instruction. Someone that is lesser than you cannot give you an instruction. That's what I was describing to us on Sunday, that you cannot have a bicycle, a bicycle rider telling a trailer driver to give way. It's not possible. And I told us, see, the way God has made us, the way you are, the way we are commissioned, we are like the trailer. And Satan is like the bicycle rider. And he's now standing in front of us and he's bullying us. And we are now fidgeting. And we are now afraid. 
How can you carry a machine gun and someone will stick? He's then saying, ah, you cannot go. You will blow his head off. Yes. That is the kind of person that God has made us. The authority to act for in behalf of or in place of another. A tax or matter entrusted to one as an agent for another. To execute a duty for someone while he is away. To do something on behalf of someone while the person is not away. It's a commission. A group of persons directed to perform some duty. These are some of the things, although in a particular place there's a little uh, explanation that I put there to just make us to be able to understand it better. But these are direct words from the Webster Dictionary, which the prophet loves to use so much. So, we can take these things and begin to look at a lot of people that God has given commission in the Bible to do certain things and certain things, and we see how God has backed them up, and they were successful in their various commissions. Now, if they were successful in their various commissions, it means that if we are the people at this end time that have also received commission from God, we must be successful in our own commission. But the Bram said, Jesus is the sponsor of this program. If Jesus is the sponsor of this program, he knew that this program will not fail. But the Bram said, this program is the program of God. If God knew that the program will fail, he won't put himself down that he wants to sponsor it. See, you cannot be a big man that wants to sponsor a candidate for a political position and you know that this candidate is not credible. This person is built up to fail. You won't put your investment there. And the Bible said that he daily loads us with benefit. In other words, he invests in our lives on a daily basis. God daily loads us with the things that we are in need of to ensure that we are successful in this journey. But Abraham said, Christ is our sponsorship. And if Christ is our sponsorship, what kind of person should we be? Christ is the sponsor of this program that we are in. What kind of human being should we be? He first of all asked, he said, what kind of person would our sponsor be? Who has never failed before in carrying out his command and in carrying out all his, uh, uh, his commission? Now, but the Bible said, how is a commission confirmed? A commission is confirmed by the identification of the person that gives the commission. If God is not identified with our lives, we are a mimic of Christianity. If God is not identified with our ministry, we cannot move an inch. We can't be a blessing to the people. See, he said, this sign shall follow. But the Bible said, he did not say the sign may follow. It is an authority. This sign shall follow they that believe. Everybody that believe among us, this sign will follow. It is not limited to the ministers alone. It is not limited to the deacons alone. It is not limited to the most senior persons in the tabernacle alone. It is given to everybody. If a child believes, the sign will follow. If a boy believes, the sign will follow. If a woman believes, the sign will follow. Everybody that believes, this sign shall follow. That is the, I, I mean, that is the confirmation of the commission. The, 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 the hand of God will continually be upon our life. People will see you and they'll say, oh, this person has been with Christ a long time. Because we can see the reflection of Christ in his life. That is the identification of God in your life. Amen. See, if people have never called you Christian, and you have been moving with God for years, and you have never got into a particular desire, he has a mission, or is a pastor, or is this or is that. See, it's because they have not seen anything worthwhile in your life to call you that. See, if you are the kind of person that you roll with everybody, everything goes. You are a mimic of Christianity. See, in your own lifestyle, every kind of dressing is fine. 
every kind of way to appear anywhere is good. When they say, ah, uh, putting on trusses is not for women. You don't care. It's not part of... You are not identifying yourself with the commission. God cannot work with someone like that. Identification of the commission is the confirmation of the commission. See, it is not something that you propel by yourself. It is not something that you try to do by yourself. Something will completely take over your life and make you what God wants you to be. That is how God identifies himself with our life. See, you cannot, you cannot, see, I think on Sunday I was reading a quotation. I didn't plan to read it, but then it just came to mind. But the Bram said, keep your skirt clean. He said, we used to have that saying a long time ago. He said, keep your skirt clean. He said, as many as... He said, it means that we should run away from anything that is questionable. We should live a holy life. He said, you don't see... No, it's not how much you... you, you how close you are to sin and not sinning, but how far we can get away from it. Shun the very appearance of the devil. Flee fornication. That's what the Bible said. And then, it now becomes that, see, some of us, it is when you now want to be married, that that's, the, that's when problem now begin. They will now begin to check, uh, is he a virgin? Is she not a virgin? Uh, can you marry a minister? Can you not marry a minister? See, from childhood, these things have been drilled into you. You flee away from every appearance of the devil. God helping us, we will not witness evil things like rape and the rest of that. Amen. There is none of us here. See, that you can say that you don't know the truth. Sure. But the Bible said, if you refuse to walk in, it said you will walk upon the prayers of godly father and godly mother right into hell. You can't take my place in heaven. Uh-huh. So I will not exchange myself for you. All of us, we hear these things together. They teach us together. So if you refuse to yield, if you refuse to walk in that way, see, you walk upon the prayers of the saints of God. You say, my parents are not in the message. It does not matter. The saints of God are praying for you. So you can walk upon the prayers of the saints of God right into hell. But God forbid that that will happen to us. God confirms his commission by identifying himself with it. Amen? Amen. I would like to read uh, some quotations from the message confirmation of the commission. I want to read from paragraph 54 to 59. Amen. But the Bram said, now I think that anything ought to be confirmed. If you will build a house, it ought to it it would have to be built according to specification, or they wouldn't confirm the house to be built. And you will have to bear uh, you have to tear it down again, build it over. And I think also if you were going down the road and or out at your work, and someone will walk up to you and say, I am a I'm a United States Marshal. Or maybe I'm a police officer. I now put you under arrest in the name of my office. Now you have a right to say to that man, yeah, the prophet stop, you have a right to ask the person, ah, let me see your identity. Just wearing a uniform is not enough. Let him identify himself. You actually have a right to ask. See, anybody can put on a uniform. Sincerely speaking, you can see a dead soldier and remove the uniform and put it on. Yes, show me your identification by your office. Yes, and you can pick up the number and go and confirm in his office. I'm not saying you should do that to Nigerian police. Oh. <laughs> but you can pick up the number tag, get to their office and confirm. Pick the name, pick the number on their chest or on their ID cards. I want to confirm if this person is truly a law enforcement agent. You have a right to do that. You can ask questions. See, I've heard the story of a young man in Nigeria who police stop and ask him, what do you do for a living? And he asked him, what right do you have to be asking me what do I do for a living? 
because they do that a lot. They stop me a lot on the road. But when they stop me and they see that I hang my suit at the back and then I'm wearing a tie and a shirt, they just say, okay, go, 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 go. Because they look at the way I appear. Ah, this one is not Yahoo boy. Anybody in Nigeria using Lexus ah, must be a Yahoo boy. <laughs> and it's not everybody that is Yahoo. They look at the way you do your hair. But really, if you are a Christian, you will appear well. Hallelujah. Yes, if you are a Christian, you will dress well. That's what I'm saying. See, this thing, the, if police arrest you on the road and says because of the way you appear, I don't know if Prof is still there. God bless you, sir. I think when he was doing his IT in Adoekiti some years back, those days of people going to cyber cafe to go and browse. I don't know if that story is true, sir. Oh, he's Lagos. Yeah, okay. Some years back, he was, they, they, accused, uh, they, they arrested a lot of people and he was in the cafe with them. But I think when they got to the police station, uh, they look at the way he dressed, talking, and no, this one cannot be among them. They release him. <laughs> and, told him to, and told him to go. Why the others were there. You know, in, in Nigerian police, you can't get to station. Bail is free. Bail is free, but you can't get there and go out for free. You must drop something. Hey. So I don't know what happened to the rest of the... Maybe one of these days he can reshare this testimony with us. Sir. We love them old testimonies. So he can share so that the young people can get to understand. Whether you are a female, you are a male, the way you appear, say a lot about you. People will address you the way you dress. Hey. So they will see me on the road, but I don't usually ask them questions. Hey. But if you pack me and say you want to check paper, I'll give you paper. Uh, if, but if you pack myself, bros, wait till you remain for there. If I have, I will give. But if it's paper, I will give you paper. And then when you see paper finish, then I collect the paper again. I keep it in the drawer. And then I go, okay, how far? Ah, should we have checked paper? <laughs> I want you all to check. <laughs> so, but really, you have a right to question. Uh, but uh, don't go and question Nigerian police. So I'm just saying that you have a right according to what the message says. Uh, so, because if you question Nigerian police, they are gun carriers. Uh, so, and you, you don't have gun. Uh, so, but God will continue to keep all of us. Uh, but you have a right uh, to actually ask questions. When anything is going wrong, you have a right to ask questions in any society that you have. Because it is the answer to your question that will confirm whether that thing is right or wrong. But the Bram said, we ought to confirm everything. The Bible even told us that let us prove all things and hold on to that which is the truth. Yeah. See, if a preacher comes here and preach something that is not according to the gospel, you have a right to question them. Yeah. The, but the Brahms is in the court. But the Brahms said, go about it in a humble way, in a humble manner. Don't be rude. Uh -huh. Because as long as he's a minister, you may be 100 years old, but he's a servant of God. Uh -huh. there's a way God places it that uh -huh, is, is above so you whether, uh, whether you are young or old you can walk up to them and say this is not the way our pastor taught us this is the way our pastor taught us that Brother Bram said and he showed us in the quotation that this is what Brother Bram said about this so sir within, can you give us a counter quotation that confirm what you are saying See, but the Bram said, if that man cannot prove it by the message, he said, he is false. He said, those were the things that the men at Ephesus, they did to the apostles that came after Paul. They said, sir, this is not what brother Paul taught us. Therefore, you are false. So, anybody can come and say this and say that. If you cannot, if you have question in your mind, ask. You have a right to anything that happens around us, we have a right to get the confirmation whether it is right or whether it is wrong. And when you have the confirmation, you hold on to that which is, which is correct. Amen. Alright. Now, if you look at him, if you look at that Masha, he has on a uniform or a badge pinning on him. That yet doesn't make him a United States Masha. Any phony could wear that. You can buy a badge over here, hats, almost in a 10 cent store. See, you just see someone wearing a vest. You say, ah, it's a player. He's not a player. I can, yes, I can, I can buy vests in the, in the shop and wear it and kit up. 
yes and then you will think that uh, i am this i am that you are not i can buy uniform i can sew police uniform and wear it and you know in nigeria we fear our military men the law it's not supposed to be see it's not actually fear we are intimidated it's intimidation i'm not ensas protester <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> i sit down in my house oh, <laughs> on that day you know when the toll gate was blocked then my office was still in shangote though so and i was you are using public transport then so I will, if I thank God that I didn't even have car at that time because, because you know what I do? Once I get to that traffic place, I will drop. Any vehicle that is carrying, I will just drop and then I will trek. Thank you, sir. You can be there for three hours and your vehicle is not moving. And you know you can't leave your vehicle there and say some. A lot of people left their vehicles at home and uh, they were using leg. So I'm not a uh, NSAS protest, but I don't like police brutality. Uh, so you said? Yes, thank you. So what we are having in Nigeria is intimidation. Anywhere in the world, a law enforcement agent is to be feared because you fear the law, but not to be intimidated. It is not uh, a right thing for anybody in any category, in the church, in the home, in anywhere. Your husband is not an hyena. It is not a, he's not a man that when he comes home, ah, fear grip everybody and everybody run, run away like rats and go and hide. No. That man, see, but the Bible said he must be able to live a life of reference that everybody in the home can reference him as a son of God. He has to create that atmosphere. So he's not an hyena that, ah, once he shout, once he scream, everybody will just scatter and just, just disappear. He is not a son. A son of God is not identified by that. See, to confirm whether you are a son of God is by character. Amen. Character is not an, it's not an endowment. It's an endowment. He, but the Prime says it's a victory and a man that is in power without character, but the Prime says it's of the devil. Power apart character is satanic. So everything ought to be confirmed. If you are claiming a particular office, we need to prove you. And show and you need to show to us that you are worthy of being in that office. It does not matter which office that you have. We have a right to ask questions. I'm not protesting, no. All right. Yeah, we are not uh, uh, yeah, we protest against the devil. Uh, no, we are not even we are not protesting against because we have won the victory already. We are in victory. We are just saying uh, the way it should be. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you look at him, he has on a uniform and a badge pinning on him. That yet doesn't make him a United States Marshal. Any phony could wear that. You can buy a badge over here at almost in a 10, 10 cent. Go Go to any roommate sale and get a uniform or anything. That doesn't make him a United States Marshal. To make himself identified, he has to have his papers with the seal upon them that confirms that his statement that he is a United States Marshal or he is nothing until he confirms to be that. He, ha he has confirmed his commission and he does it by a sealed statement. A declaration to show that this man has been sworn in. And he's been, his commission has been sealed with the seal of the United States. And then over the top of his name. And that makes him then, whether he has a badge on or whether he has a uniform on. As long as he is packing this paper, he is the mashah. And that's his commission. Just a badge and a uniform will not work. You are not showing it again. I'm on paragraph 58. We find so many times in the army, I've heard my brothers and many of those who was overseas, that many times the Japanese and the Germans and the other aliens, uh, alien countries uh, that was against us in the war, if you could pick up a dead soldier, then get one of their soldiers that the uniform will fit him. Why? He could impersonate an American soldier and he had to be properly identified. 
or they will never believe his uniform or maybe his tag maybe his tag he had uh, the tag that he had on his neck he had he had to be identified that he was an American soldier because he could easily be a spy just any cheap spy can wear a uniform of the United States and we find that in all and we find that in all walks of life we find that today maybe on the street we hear many a people say that they are an American amen so anybody can appear to be anything it doesn't show that they are this or that they are that everything ought to be confirmed everything has to be proved everything has to be shown that this thing is correct that this thing is true Right now, the Bible said that this sign shall follow them that believe. He did not say that the people that believe will follow these signs. There is a sign that we are following, right? We are following this sign. Uh-huh. But the confirmation that we are following this sign will follow us. Amen. And the confirmation is that. Our life will be according to this thing that the pillar of fire had already said in the world. And beyond that, if anything wrong contrary, but the Bible said we have a right to cast out every demon. Now, let's go back to Mark chapter 16. Now, this is the commission. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, they shall be saved but he that believe not shall be damned. See, this is beyond what I can help somebody to do. The power to believe is not in my hand. The power that is in my hand is to say what the word says. Is to say what the tape says. But the Bram said, uh, I think in the message, uh, uh, God's chosen place of worship. But the Bram took that from, I think, Deuteronomy chapter 16, uh, where the Bible was talking about uh, adding yeast. I think he's, he's Iwukara. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he said, a little leaven, a leaven the whole lump. But Abraham said, we should not add here or add there to it. He said, exactly the way God has given it is the same way. If we preach it the same way that the prophet has brought it, there's bound to be confirmation. In our homes, there will be confirmation. In the church of God, there will be confirmation. But the Bible said the church of God can grow to the extent and say a dead body will be taken into this place and he will use his leg to walk out. Yeah. It's the confirmation of the commission that we received. That God is identifying himself with us. It is not just good enough for us to just be living our life. We come to church and there is no change day in, day out. But the Bible even said that there is no way that you can come to the tabernacle for a service and remain the same way. And see, our prayer is that as we are coming and going, we should be getting better, climbing that that ladder of the stature of a perfect man, building faith on faith and on other virtues every day of our life. Here a little, there a little. Everything coming together to make a whole. Now, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism is done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every other way that a man is baptized is not correct. But the Bible said, if you are correctly baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, he said, God in heaven is bound to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Correct, you are under obligation. Thank you, sir. That's the word the prophet used. See, when you are correctly baptized, see, you, you thoroughly repented and you are correctly baptized. God by himself from heaven is under obligation to give us the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible, see, the Bible did not say we will beg for it. He said it's a gift. 
after you have done what is right, then someone now come and compensate you with something. It's a dash. He said, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But the brand, when he was describing, use capital letter G. It's a gift. It's not just the gift of the Spirit. The nine, we understand the nine spiritual gift. But this one is a different kind of gift. A, the life of Christ by himself come upon our life. See, yes, the gift of himself, yes. You don't have to even get to church from where you were baptized before God filled you with the Holy Spirit. But the Bible said you don't have to come to the pulpit here and knock down and say, oh God, give me the Holy Spirit. There is no need for, as long as the right things are done, God is bound to identify himself naturally with it. That is the confirmation, I mean, yeah, that's the confirmation of our commission. It will show that God is backing us. It will show that God is with us. It will show that God is in our homes. It will show that God is in our life. It will show that God is in our work. It will show that in every walks of life, God is identifying himself with us. In every area, nothing will be exempted. It will be God all the way. He said, and this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in the name that is above all name, the name that is higher in heaven, higher on head, higher underneath the head than any other name. There is no any other name greater than the name of Jesus. The Bible said that in the name of Jesus, every name shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. There is no any other name that is higher than the name of Jesus. How we love to sing of his name. How we love to hear of his name. How we love to preach on his name. How we love to be baptized in his name. How we love to do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there is no any other name that is higher than that. Any other name is a counterfeit name. God cannot identify himself with any other name. That is the place that he has chosen to place, his, to place himself. That is in the name Christ. That is the chosen place. So he said, in my name, that is in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we shall cast out devils. It's a commission. Confirming, this is a confirmation of our commission. See, if the devil is not afraid of you, it means that the Holy Spirit is not yet dear. If you glorify Satan, the Holy Spirit is not yet in dear. See, things will happen in our life. I kept saying it, and I will keep saying it. A lot of things will continue to happen. And our prayer is that things that will keep elevating our faith will continue to happen. If you, if you don't say amen, that is what the word says. But anything that will be greater than your faith to carry will not happen. Bro, God took you to that place because he knows that your faith can carry it. And you testify with your mouth that you came out a stronger man. Don't worry, your body physically is weary, but your spirit is stronger. I'm telling you, see, you can be in captivity either lawfully or unlawfully. We heard in the morning, there shall be restoration. And we thank God, our brother is restored. He said, he came out on hot. Nothing touched him. They, did, they wanted to be torturing him, but supernatural. They must not torture him. He can't go, he can't get beyond that level. Just keep him there. See, just put him there. There are some souls that need to be converted, and there are some people that need to hear the gospel, either for their salvation or for their damnation. See, some people can claim that ah, we didn't hear of the gospel. Ah, we did not know that ah, the message exists. We did not know God will just play the tape. Shebi, when I allowed this, my son, to be in captivity in your den, did he preach the word to you? And I said, ah, he it, it did. So they've heard it. If they, it's, the Bible says, if they believe, he said, they shall be saved. But if they don't believe, it's for their damnation. So, sir, you went there so that the gospel can be preached for some people's salvation and possibly for some people's damnation. But we pray that all of them that ever had an encounter with you will locate Christ in Jesus' name. By the reason of the event, they will all locate Christ in Jesus' name. 
See, you are like David. Do you know that if you meet any of those guys today, there will not be anything in you that will be feeling like you are hurting or that they hurt you. That's the kind of person that David was. I said, I love it when I realize that my name has been changed to David. <laughs> I'm beginning to learn. In our home, we've been reading a lot now about 1st Samuel and 2nd Samuel. So he's been telling me a lot of, ah, he's been reminding me. I think the most book I've read so much in my life has been 1st and 2nd Samuel, the stories of David. The, yeah, right from secondary school. Yes, I was not even bearing David that time. <laughs> you know, I changed my name at the time and then I, I, I used to be Henry. But I, yeah, I realized ah, there's no Henry in the world. Yeah, Henry is not here. <laughs> so uh, I'm telling you, yeah, no, no, it's a former, former name. All things have passed away. <laughs> so, but now I am David. David, I fall, I feel We are marching on in the glory of the Lord. Amen. So David, anytime you know, Saul persecuted him so much. Anytime he had opportunity to encounter him, there is nothing inside of him to hurt him. He will always feel that, ah, I must not touch the anointed of the Lord. Do you know when they killed Saul and that guy came? <laughs> hey, sir, I see him like this. He was actually dying while I took him. <laughs> he was actually like. <laughs> He was, he was the greatest liar that I've ever seen. I saw him. Ah, sir, what I did, just to make you happy, I just took him like this. And then his life was taken away from him. And David looked at him. He said, you mean you did it? You killed an anointed of the Lord. You are supposed to have rescued him. Take him to the best of the hospitals and come and call me. And then I will appear and say, ah, my master, you cannot die like that. I'm sorry for what has happened. But you mean you took the life of an anointed of the law and he called his voice. Fall on him. Yes, by your mouth. Sir, do you know that after Saul was executed, David was still looking for opportunity to do good to the house of Saul. And he actually did. So sir, you might possibly encounter any of those boys. You might not identify them. Maybe they were, they were masked all through. Right? But, oh, they mask you so that you won't see them. Oh. Mm, okay, so somehow they might identify you. <laughs> so, yes. They, uh-huh. Oh, face to face. So there's possibility that you will encounter them. But the Bram said, all of us, we have to be like David. He spoke it in the great warrior David. He said, oh, how he wished that all of us would be little David. So, yeah, so you might possibly have encounter with them at some point or the other. There is a natural flow of love, flow of fellowship and expression that will flow from you to him. It's an evidence of the Holy Spirit. See, that politician that escaped, if you ever smell them, because they are from a deep, they are from under different commission. They are not under the same kind of atmosphere. If you ever smell them, Maybe you will get bombed and bomb their entire generation away so that nothing like that. So, what am I trying to say? He said, This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in the name that is above all other names, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, all these things have been happening in our midst. You are not saying amen. Whether you say amen or not, they have been happening. Every one of us here, at one point or the other, we have been sick and we prayed for ourselves without even the intervention of the elders of the church. We have prayed for ourselves at one point or the other and we have been sick. That same sickness, no matter how little, has taken some people's life. It's a confirmation that God is in our midst. It's a confirmation of the commission that we are under. Now, listen. Your instrument of warfare is this word. Satan, the only way Satan can disarm you is to make you disbelieve your instrument of warfare. 
But see, Brother Bram said you must have absolute faith in this world. If, we, if, if you believe in your instrument, do you know that Brother Bram said that what the devil carry that look like sword is actually a stick. He said one little stick that he used like this. He said, but you, you are carrying a sword. If you are carrying a sword, why will you be afraid of somebody that is carrying a stick? You just use your sword and cut him off. You do what? You cast him out. Amen. So, but the Bible says, stay right behind your fortification. And what are you fortified by? By the word. The prophet said, what if a man is... No, no, let me read this. He said, it is what God's word says. Yeah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The living word, spoken by the living God, must be in the living being. But where if a man is commissioned by the supernatural God, the supernatural power of God will be with that supernatural commission. But Abraham said, Satan's army brings diseases. That is their own commission. You will see the commission of Satan. We can't go further, further. But you will see the commission of Satan. You will also see your own commission. And majority of us sometimes we do fail in our commission. See, but the Bram said, if a child is there, call the elders. See, but they really had opportunity to pass through our place yesterday. My baby has been feeling some since. Since Tuesday, it was warm a little bit on Tuesday. We gave her prastamol, we prayed and all that. Then Wednesday till maybe yesterday, she's not really been eating very well. When I saw opportunity, ah, ah, sir, man of God, hey, just, sir, my baby is feeling so bad. Just come and help me lay. And he actually came. Uh, he was so busy. He said, because of that prayer is the reason why I have come. And we really appreciate that, sir. The Lord bless you. The baby is well. Satan's army brings diseases. It could be virus. They can call it virus. Uh, somebody came to this place in the morning. I went out to go get some things uh, while the service was going on. So I met him. He said he lives in Australia. He knows you. He wanted to see you. met the man, sir. Uh, so he now said he was using nose mask. It's good to use nose mask. Oh, let's be protected. Let's uh, use this. Uh, yes, let's be. It's, it's a responsible thing to do. The ideal thing to do. We should use our nose masks everywhere we go every time and all that. Except maybe when we are alone and we are touching many things, maybe we can lose guard a little bit. But when you are with anyone, use your nose mask. It's a responsible thing to do. So he came into the compound and he saw some people under the tent. He saw one of the officers opening the window and coming. I think about two of us were with him. He said, I said it looks like you people are not taking precautions for, for this. Thing. I said, sir, it's not like we are not taking precautions. He said, I said, we are just simple people who just believe that our protection is in God. Because you can use nose mask and still take the virus. You can, you can do all the precautions and still take the virus. And then, you can, you can take the virus. You, the virus cannot kill you. But a lot of people have been killed by the virus with all the precautions that they have taken. If you die in the, uh, in the midst of COVID, it's not COVID that kill you. It is time for you to go. That's why I said the virus cannot kill you. The virus cannot kill a child of God. There is an appointed time, the, the boundary that we cannot pass. So if they say, I, they, they, they diagnose him with COVID, it's not COVID that kill you. But COVID can kill some people. Uh-huh. Because our commission says that it cannot kill us. I will read it out to all of us. Satan's army brings diseases. That is what Satan is. He is a destroyer. He came to destroy, to kill, to maim, to steal, to scatter things. That is his own commission. Satan, the whole kingdom of Satan is sicknesses, death and sorrow and frustration and worry all on Satan. I'm reading a direct quote from the greatest battle ever fought. But Abraham said everything is on Satan. If you are worried, you are not operating under your commission. If you are frustrated, if you are depressed, you see these days people talk about depression easily. Say, ah, he was depressed. Ah, he slid into depression. We don't talk about mental toughness anymore. We don't talk about building faith in people. We don't talk to people about what they can do in themselves anymore. 
But before you know, because the word has become so neurotic, before you know, one 14 year old girl will say, Daddy, I'm depressed. Depression is not in the word of God. Satan is the one that brings depression. If you are depressed tonight, I'm telling you, you are not under your commission. You will see your commission. I will read it out. All of those in frustration, worry, death, sorrow, sadness of heart is from Satan. But the Bible said, all is on Satan. Now look, but the Bible said, God is life. God is faith. God is joy. Peace. Over here, everything, all the good things belong to God. Now, that's the two great forces that's coming together right now. They are battling. They are battling right here in the building right now. They battle day by day with you. Every force. Satan follow you along. That great big kingly priestly Goliath trying to scare the liver out of you. His own commission is to distract you from your commission. That's his own. He knows his job description and he does it every time. But your own job description is to cast him out. Yeah. Satan follow you along. That great, big, kingly, priestly Goliath trying to scare the liver out of you. You are fortified with the gospel, with the word of truth around your loins. Glory. Preacher, that's what it is. Element of salvation, the sheet of faith, and the sword waving it in your, in your hand. Satan, I am coming to meet you. That is a word from a, from a son of God. Satan, I am coming to meet you. You meet me in the name of science. You meet me in the name of culture. You meet me in the name of organization. You meet me in the name of this, that, or the other. But I meet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Israel. I am coming after you. Give way. Even death itself cannot stand dear. You see that death cannot kill you. Virus cannot kill you. Headache cannot kill you. Cancer cannot kill you. Any form of diseases cannot take your life. If you leave the scene today, it is because your time is up. It does not matter how old you are or how young you are. If you get to live today, it is because God is true with you. But the Bible said, nothing can take your life except God is true with you. It stands cutting. It's a commission. It's the word of the Lord. And God must back it up. But the Bible said, if God does not back it up, he is no longer God. But the Bible said, God will be guilty for him to have done it for someone. I will not do it for you. Even death itself cannot stand there. Chop a hole right through it. Satan's army brings diseases. And God's army is commissioned to cast them out. There you are. Every time Satan throws anything onto you, God's army is to cast him out. That's the very techniques that God used. Casting out imaginations. Casting out the devil. Satan used the army of destruction to disbelieve God's word and set him up sorry, and set him up a better kingdom that Michael had and God cast him out. God's method is cast out the devil. Cast down reasoning. Cast down superstition. Cast down worry. Cast down diseases. Cast down sin. Amen. You are above it. Resurrected in Christ Jesus, setting in heavenly places with every evil under your feet. If Satan starts to stick his head in there, see, what you need to do is cast him out. Every time that you are worrying, Satan is on the move. Every time that you are sick, Satan is on the move. Every time that you are unhappy, Satan is present. But the Bible said God wants his children to be happy. 
If you want us to be happy today, he wouldn't want us to be sad the next day. See, God, see, he said everywhere, if I said this everywhere that the sole of our feet would try to say he has given it unto us as a possession. See, I tell you, anywhere that you get to, but the Bram said you are a child of prosperity. See, I always believe it that God will make a way for me somehow. Anywhere I get to, I always believe that they will, my space will be created. If I move to a new land today, God will create a space for me. If you move to a new environment, see, God will create your own space for you. I'm telling you, anywhere that the sole of your feet get to, God has given it unto you as a possession. If you move to a new country, God will make a way for you there. If you move to a new city, God will make a way for you there. That is what God had already said in his word. And he will stand quoting. I am a son of prosperity. I am a child of prosperity. See, you need to pride yourself in the scriptures. You need to pride yourself in what the Bible already said about you. That is the only way for you to get out of gloominess and get out of situations that are out of control. See, putting yourself in the condition that God has already put you. Any time that you are sick, Satan is at work. Any time that you are feeling that I'm worried, Satan is at work. Cast down imaginations. What happened? When them, one of them doubters got in heaven, God kicked him out. And what did he say to the soldiers that raised him cry? When a devil comes along, kick him out. Cast him out. You are the soldiers that's raised in Christ. But the Bram said, you are not a fresh recruit. He said, you are grown up now. Oh man, I wish I could get that quote. It's in COD. I can't remember this, the exact way, but the Bram put it. He said, you are not a fresh recruit. You are an old soldier now. Be strong in the faith. When Jesus trained his army and commissioned them to the end of the world, go ye into all the world preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow the believers. My soldiers. The sign will follow the soldiers of Christ. In my name they shall cast out devils. Speak with new tongues. If they take up serpent or drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, but the Brahman now said, Suppose you need healing. He said, what does the word say? Suppose you need miracle. What does the word say? Suppose you need prosperity. What does the word say? Suppose you need a certain thing. Suppose you need deliverance. What does the word say? Suppose you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What does the word say? Locate what the word has said about you in the commission that God has granted you and take it by the word of God. It will come to pass. But the Bram said, suppose you need healing. What does the word say? Well, we have, we have all read it in countless time, but did not get in the spirit when reading it. Did we ask God, did we ask God for his spirit to teach us the real truth? If we did, we will call the headers. That's what the word says. We will call, that's what the commission says. We will call the elders, confess our sins, be anointed and prayed for, and that will be that. It might not come immediately, but in the realm of the spirit, it is all over. The commission had been confirmed in the realm of the spirit. There is no other court of appeal. God will fulfill his war. God will back up the commission. God will, be, God will identify himself with what he had already said in his war. As long as we carry everything out according to the word of God, God is bound to be identified with it. May the Lord bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Let us bow our heads for prayer. The reason I love to hear is what it sounds like me.
music in my head, the sweetest name on earth. Hallelujah! Oh, how I love to Oh, how I love to
and we're on the Lord's errand. There is nothing of devil that can stop us because we carry the staff of the kingdom. We have the name of the Lord. They couldn't stop David. Neither could they stop the three Hebrew children. Daniel was unstoppable. The walls of Jericho couldn't prevent Joshua from taking the lands of the Canaanites. These men under commission overran Hall. The Red Sea couldn't stop them. The waters of Jordan gave way. And what a blessing it is to know that if we are in the same errand for our Lord, because we are the generation sent to declare his life, to show forth the testimony of his life, to show to the world that he is not dead, he is alive. We become the expression and the definition of Christ's character in every aspect of human life and endeavor. As husbands, we define Christ as husband to the world. As wives, we define Christ as wives to the world. Whatever position that we are called unto, we may be farmers, we may be engineers, we may be accountants, we may be bankers, we may be teachers, we may be marketers, whatever our role is in life, we are not just ordinary professionals. We are Christian professionals. We express and divine Christ to our generation by all our callings in life. If there is a call, there must be a commission. And if those things were unstoppable, we are also unstoppable. Because behind every commission is an authority. What power did Moses have to sink Pharaoh and his army? It was beyond Moses. But his commission stood for him. It will be beyond us as mortals to confront Satan and the power of darkness. But guess what? Our commission stands for us. That traffic warden does not have the power to stop a trailer, to even stop a beetle, a small car, not to talk of a 40 ton long articulated vehicle. But, friends, that guy had a commission to control the traffic, and there is an authority that backs him up, is the absolute to the traffic on the road. And by that authority, when it raises its hand, brakes must screech, vehicles must stop, because a man under commission is on his errand. Multiply that a million times. That is the tones of power that is resident in our lives. We fail to enjoy, to exercise these things because many a time we don't realize who we are. We fail to enjoy them because we do not have the character for it. We fail to enjoy them because we do not have the faith for these things. If we do not have faith to move an headache, how much more greater things and these things have been put at our disposal. Christ is not coming to do them for us. The prophet said he left a portion for the church. And he said we are to fill that gap. Let us rise above our prejudice. Let us become an Israelite like Nathaniel in whom there is no God. Let's keep the things that will stand between our soul and the Savior away. Let's come under the blood that we might fulfill our commission. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift.
teach to move and they certainly will move he said but the man under commission must not be carrying exhibits the prophet made an example with his life he said when he had an exhibit he rose up to fulfill his commission that ugly demon Say you hypocrite you, you, you mean you want to cast me out After this <laughs> After you told a lie And the prophet said I told the dad Of that child so I've got some business to sort out with the Lord if you could wait when I return we'll come back and deal with this guy brethren he kept his way clear it must not be difficult for us to repent many a times without repentance we can fulfill our commission the prophet talked to the attorney. He talked to the wife. He, he went to God. And when his way became clear, he came back to that whole demon. And the whole demon had nothing else to say. And now the prophet said, you come out of that boy. And he had to. Oh God, give us a life that when we are on the approach the demons will be trembling you say it's not possible it is possible Christ came to demonstrate that for us before the Lord spoke to the men of Gadara the demons were already begging for their lives my prophet told me that if a believer goes on his knees to pray the kingdom of darkness is in perplexity. That is the life we must live, church. That is our commission. That child of God has not even opened his mouth. He's just going on his knees. And Satan and his host begin to see that and say, ah, we are in trouble. If we could get that guy not to get on his knees. But can you stop a man on that commission? Can you stop a daughter of God on that commission? We must not live our sad lives. Let's think on our ways, friends. God has no other hands than mine and yours. No other legs, no other being. Through whom he wants to express himself. Christ in a body form was the fullness of God that bodily, the fullest revelation of God. But you and I, we are the final revelation. Then we are to show to this generation that he is not dead, he is actually alive. The prophet said this is the reason the Holy Ghost was given. For the church to be the continuation of the works of Christ. In the message perfect faith the prophet said i'm putting you on the same platform that i have he said to exercise this perfect faith will mean a lot of shaking down for you it will mean a lot of shaking down for me can we allow the fetters to be shaken away 
can we allow the complexes to go the angers the lust the evil concupiscence the dishonesties oh god the striving spirit the backbiting the bitterness all works of the flesh can we allow them to be shaken off when they get out of our life we'll become light-footed to fulfill our commission Lord tonight may every yoke be broken by the reason of the anointing that came with your watch tonight may you break every yoke may you break the tempter's power may the sins be delivered may we be purified may we be cleansed and made all to fulfill our commission this project cannot fail it must not fail you designed us to be your continuation Lord we report for service tonight we give ourselves wholly unto you search us Lord try us Lord see if there be any wicked way in us for cleansing we have come may the water of the watch that we have fellowship around may it cleanse us may it make us whole May the call of fire touch our tongues. As you ask, who will I send? Send us, O Lord. We value your kingdom. We value you above our necessary image, above the cares of this life. Send us, O God. Help us never to be ashamed. You told the saints, you told the disciples, behold, I send you amongst scorpions and serpents. He said, but nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have sent us into this world of sin, into this degenerate condition, into this Satan's Eden, oh God. Lord, let not their influence hurt us. Give us grace to rise above it as a righteous branch that you promised in the message flashing red light of his coming. Help us to live above the reproach of this generation, oh God that our banner will be clear and our testimony will be sure. Bless these saints, Lord. Pour out yourselves upon us. The church can do nothing but by the Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill up these vessels, O God. Cleanse these vessels, O God. Purify us, dear Father. Make us champions of faith. If there is any body feeling defeated, may you give them a lift, O God. If there be any feeling discouraged, may you encourage them, Lord. If there be any body in despair, may you may they gather new hope tonight. If there's anybody in confusion, may you make your leadership, your divine direction clear to such a soul, O God. Touch your people once again. We need you. Lord, we need you. We can't even walk without you holding our hands. We give our hands unto you, Lord. We give our thoughts unto you, Lord. We give our opinions unto you, Lord. Even our entire being we offer completely. Take our life and let it ever be. Only all for you. Give us the consciousness, O God that our influence matters help us in our actions help us in our reactions whether in the open or in the closet may we live right may we live pure may we live honestly may we serve you oh without any guile in the name of Jesus Christ may our love be without dissimulation in the name of Jesus Christ arise unto our help Thank you, Father. Thank you for opening the new week for us. We go forth in thy name. Give us the singleness of heart that our headship may remain singular. May we never resort to self help May we be satisfied with this message. May we follow it in all trueness, in all honesty. Oh God, without considering any alternative, because to us there is even no alternative. 
it is this message and this message alone oh god you are our holy age and we have given you our government you take up responsibility for all our life we hold on to you this day unto thee oh god do we lift up our souls oh our god we trust in thee let us not be ashamed let not the enemy triumph over us oh our god we trust in you for that sick dad for that sick mom for that sick brother sick sister for that wayward child oh god for that hopeless condition for those needs of our life for those things that are degenerating for a complete regeneration and total restoration oh our god we trust in thee for every need oh god oh break the tempter's power take away every gloom oh god fill our life with your glory pass through this audience lord don't pass no one by give us victory we trust in deep for our finances for our debts oh god for all situations that there be a turnaround for better may a time of refreshing come from the presence of the almighty god set to thy people establish them make them happy oh fulfill their joy all the programs that are ahead of us we trust in thee for them we trust you for the church of the living god for the servants of god for our pastor lord for the board for every family for our loved ones keep us all safe we trust in you for all our journeys for all our appointments for all our expectations keep us safe oh god and in the hollow of your heart grant it dear father to us that your angel will go before us in a new way the power of darkness will fail there will be hope in heavens and we shall celebrate milestones and progresses in every aspect of our life we trust in thee for the servants of god that you have used today even this evening even the, the one that gave us rich testimonies we pray that the richest of your blessings will be their portion we trust in you for the rest of god's servants oh god they've always been a blessing to us may you resharpen them may you equip them more and more give adequate grace lord and we upon whom the labor has been bestowed may this labor never fail may it never falter may it prosper in our life to walk upon the atoms of our body to change us from glory to glory holy words long preserved let it impact lord let it impact our life positively oh god spiritually physically materially financially academically professionally in all in our family in all point of our expectation let it be blessed when we go out and when we come in let the light fall upon us in goodly places may we enjoy the richest heritage we go in that might enjoying the week taking possessions even beyond the week possessing every gate of the enemy throughout the year all the days of our lives in the name of the lord jesus christ amen God bless you, saints. Amen. That's a wonderful blessing.